Hello, hello. This is Steven, back with Age of Discovery. Today we'll be jumping back into the furious debate around what events established the time frame of Age of Empires 3, trying to take an objective look at what historical context the game provides so we can establish a date range. This is part two, the end date. The objective of this video is to establish what years we might consider the game to end at. This is bound to be more contentious than the start date, so I expect to see thoughtful responses and definitely no YouTube comments telling me to go to the shadow dimension. As before, this video will go through all sorts of things, lightly touching on what I consider the most important milestones, units, text, cards, references, characters, and real-life events that bound both this game and history. I will also include exclusions that may influence our thoughts on the period. I'll walk through the most liberal and the most conservative estimates of the game's end date with events in between and give my thoughts. With my prefaces out of the way, let's get into some history. Now that we've established some options on the starting date, see the linked video if you want a refresher or just want to hear my jokes about salami again. That just leaves the end date. This is a more divisive topic than the start date, as the debate ranges over a massive breadth of... 25 years. <sighs> yeah, people get pretty heated on via the internet over minor matters. We'll start with the latest reference in game. So what is the last date referenced in Age of Empires 3. Fortunately, this one is pretty straightforward. It's 1899. Enter the Boxer Rebellion. The famed Boxer Rebellion lasted from 1899 to 1901, originally as a populist uprising against foreigners and Christians. The Boxers were committing some crimes like littering, double parking, and murder. It was mostly murder. Thousands of murders. The Qing government, rather stupidly, switched sides to support the uprising after getting rather annoyed at the colonial powers who had deployed troops in occupied coastal cities, as one does, in order to protect their own citizens. China then swiftly got its teeth kicked in by Flying City armed to the teeth commanded by a reality-hopping false prophet. Wait. No, no, no. That's... that's not right. That's the backstory to Bioshock Infinite. Hmm. In reality, the Qing government actually got its teeth kicked in by a remarkably unified coalition of colonial powers, including a full roster of World War I participants, with Austria-Hungary, Germany, Russia, France, Britain, Italy, the Netherlands as well, although they were officially neutral and were just marching armies through China for fun, apparently. USA and Japan were also joining in for some light-hearted looting and war crimes. Yeah, there weren't exactly any good guys in this conflict. When the revolt broke out, the peasants believed that their rad boxing skills would prevent them from getting shot. 55 days in Peking later, that was proven to be a lie. But the thing is, the Boxer Rebellion established the high watermark of European colonialism in China. After the horrific events of the Boxers, Western powers decided to rely on the Qing government to get what they wanted out of China, figuring that while they could continue to expand, it wasn't worth the cost to claim more territory. Japan, on the other hand, did not reach that conclusion to some interesting results a little later. But that's outside the scope of the game. So, are there any references that might indicate a later date? There is one in-game reference that could be interpreted as post-1899. 
the Finnish Revolution available to the Swedes and Russians. The real-life independence movement occurred in 1917, following the Russian Revolution, which would push the game to cover World War I. However, this could also be interpreted to refer to the establishment of the Grand Duchy of Finland in 1806, after the Russians won the territory from the Swedes. This Grand Duchy gave the Finns extensive autonomy within Russia and led to the establishment of a nationalist movement in the 1860s. There were actually even earlier independence movements within Finland, with one movement in 1742 and another in 1788. But the thing is, both of these early movements were political in nature and were originated in Russia, not in Finland or with the Finnish people. They were arrangements by the Russian government to try to get the Finnish people to rebel against Sweden. Once the territory swapped to Russia, Russia was no longer interested in the concept of Finnish independence, you know, for some reasons that involve, you know, claiming their territory. But the Finnish were given great autonomy within that Grand Duchy of Finland, and that is ultimately what led to the rise of nationalism in Finland. As with many other in-game revolutions, this reference is most likely to this emerging nationalist movement and small-scale revolts rather than fully-fledged wars for independence. This is reinforced given that Finland's independence movement was actually completely bloodless, with Vladimir Lenin and the Bolshevik government in Russia recognizing the independence of Finland without trying to subjugate the people. So, the Finnish revolt does not require a date later than 1899, and most likely can be considered to being within the 1860s. So, are there any other considerations that we may need to take? <laughs> Queen Victoria, the foremost monarch of the 19th century, ruled over one-fourth of the world's population and oversaw the transformation of the British Empire into the world's greatest power. A person of such significance that this time period is referred to as the Victorian Era. She died in 1901. 1901, right at the turn of the century, was a bookend on the expansionist period of colonialism, with Victoria going out with it. European powers had already divvied up Africa and would not claim any more territory in China. The New World had largely rebelled against their former masters, some even forming empires of their own, and largely establishing the borders of the countries in the Americas that we abide by today. Japan certainly did continue to expand, precipitating the Russo-Japanese War a mere three years later. But I do not consider that to be within the boundaries of Age of Empires III even for a liberal date. But why do I draw the line at 1901 and not 1904, you ask? Surely, if you're willing to go to 1901, why not 1904? Or even 1914 to World War I? My answer, for one, don't call me Shirley. And for two, there are no references in-game that require a start date beyond 1901. For three, there are major omissions, primarily aircraft, widespread use of electricity, radio, and internal combustion engines. As far as aircraft go, the first testbed Zeppelin flew in 1900, and two bicycle repairmen from Ohio, of all places, flew an airplane for the first time in 1903. Concerning electricity, most Americans listening will be familiar with the story of Benjamin Franklin flying a kite in a thunderstorm. Knowledge of electricity and its limited industrial uses were around for decades before the light bulb. For example, Massive arc lights were used in 1854 in Paris for large public works projects to allow continuous building. Another example of electricity in use in 1854 is with the electrical telegraph. This was in use during the Crimean War in Crimea, 
and was the first conflict in which telegraphs were used. This shows up in-game as the researchable technology telegraphs available on the Russo-Turkish War historical map. Electricity was largely confined to these niche uses until the first light bulb was patented in 1880. And even then, electricity distribution and indoor lighting did not become prevalent outside of places of the rich and famous until the 20th century. The White House was not even electrified until 1891. The first radio transmission occurred in 1895, and it wasn't widely used until commercial applications emerged in 1900. The first car was developed by a certain Carl Bentz of Mercedes-Benz fame in 1886. It wasn't until safer, mass-produced cars emerged, like the Model T in 1908, that they were seen as anything other than expensive death traps. There is a clear absence of references to events occurring post-1899, and given how many references the game contains, milestones such as flight, indoor lighting, and cars, missing from the game as well as the absence of any substantive references to events after 1900, indicates that the timeline can go no further than 1901. There are arguments against an 1899 to 1901 end date, which all hinge upon omissions. One of the most significant omissions is the absence of what we now refer to as pre-dreadnought battleships. By 1883, most military warships with sails had been decommissioned, and all commissioned warships had steam power excluding memorial vessels like the HMS Victory or the USS Constitution. And, as mentioned earlier, electricity and interior lighting experienced gradual integration and were uncommon but not rare by 1899. Thus, as it stands, the most liberal date can be considered to be 1901, with some major omissions potentially counting against it. Now that we've established the latest date that could be within the game's time frame, what is the earliest date that we might consider to be the closing date of Age of Empires 3? That would be 1876. This date is driven by a handful of significant events, as well as a few major omissions. The first piece of evidence is Custer's Last Stand, the Battle of the Little Bighorn, or as the victors call it, the Battle of the Greasy Grass. Yeah! A more Accurate description would be Custer's poorly thought out attack on a Lakota Sioux war camp while outnumbered 3 to 1 while leaving his artillery at home. Lieutenant Colonel George Armstrong Custer was a famous Civil War general and hero, known for his bravado and penchant for charging into action. That bravado is what got him killed and started what is known as the Great Sioux War, which effectively ended the independence of the Lakota and their territorial expansion. This event is included in the campaigns as part of the poorly written final chapter of the Black Family Campaign, Shadow. The only scalp you need to worry about, old man, is the one on your narrow-minded head. What reinforces the notion that the game must not end earlier than 1876? One piece of evidence is the Germans' needle gunners, the Dreyse needle gun was first used in the Prussian army in 1841 and used through 1876. These saw extensive use in the Franco-Prussian War in 1870. Another is the in-game technology Peacemakers, which has an image of the Colt Peacemaker, a gun that was widely adopted in 1873. Ironclads were first utilized in the American Civil War coming face to face in the Battle of Hampton Roads in 1862. Ironclads rapidly became widespread, with Japan obtaining their first ironclad, the creatively named Kotetsu, meaning ironclad, in 1869 from the United States, buying the last ironclad that had actually been obtained by the Confederacy. The Meiji Restoration, referenced in the Japanese consulate, occurred in 1868. The Mexican H3 card Plan of Tuxtepec references the declaration of General Porfirio Diaz in 1876, shortly before taking control of Mexico. The H4 card, Porfiriato, also references this period where General Diaz ruled from 1876 to 1911. 
shotgun messengers were in service in the Wild West, and first started being called shotgun messengers in the 1870s. Gatling guns were invented in 1861 and saw use in the American Civil War. Gatling guns were advertised for use on camels as early as 1872, although it is unknown if Gatling camels were ever real. Warships with sails were built until 1871, when the first steam-only ship of the line, HMS Devastation, launched. And as stated earlier, sailing ships were still deployed by major Western powers to some degree until 1883. Interestingly, the last battle between sailing ships was on August 21st, 1945, in the last naval engagement of World War II when a Chinese junk under the command of American sailors journeying to Shanghai fought with a junk manned by Japanese sailors. The combat involved the Americans firing bazookas at the Japanese and boarding the other vessel, so all in all, it was pretty cool. But despite this being a fascinating event that will definitely win you a round in trivia, the age of sail had long passed. Unless... Anywho, given the large number of events immediately before and in 1876 that are referenced in-game, we can establish a conservative end date of 1876. Anything earlier would be omitting several major events in world history. As with the start date, attention should be given to referenced events in-game that would be excluded by the conservative estimate. So what events between 1876 and 1901 are referenced in Age of Empires 3? Let's start with two revolts that occurred in the late 1800s. The first was the Romanian War of Independence, reflected as the Romanian Revolution in-game, that was waged from 1877 to 1878 against the Ottomans, which established Romania as a sovereign country. The second was the Arabi Revolt in Egypt that started in 1881. The revolt was protesting French and British influence in Egypt, including French control over the Suez Canal, and ended in 1882 the British conquest of the country, functionally changing overlordship from the Ottomans to the British. The Arabi Revolt neatly brings us into our next topic with the scramble for Africa. The main date popularly associated with the Scramble for Africa is 1884 with the Berlin Conference, where the European powers sat down and decided on how to divide up the world's second largest continent between them. But the reason that the Berlin Conference occurred was because European interest in the continent had risen fundamentally due to advances in medicine, particularly the isolation of quinine from tree bark in 1820, which was used to treat malaria. By 1880, things were picking up, as the British went to war against the Boer descendants of Dutch immigrants in the aptly named First Boer War, which is referenced in Age of Empires III as the South Africa Revolution. As you might expect, if there was a first, there was a second. The Second Boer War occurred from 1899 to 1902, and featured the British establishing possibly the first concentration camp in the world, as well as a young British officer by the name of Winston Churchill, who would use his exploits in the war to amass fame and propel himself into a career in Parliament. As this was occurring, in 1881, Germany started recruiting the first local troops as soldiers to serve in their armies, and other European powers did likewise. These would be known as Ascaris, which are an in-game mercenary unit. Another reference to this period in-game is the colonial treasure guardians on African maps, such as the colonial gunslinger. These guys are wearing khaki pith helmets. The first historical references to pith helmets emerged in 1858, but they were white until the khaki color widely associated with them was first introduced during the Anglo-Zulu War in 1879, which sadly is not currently in Age of Empires III. Devs, if you're listening, please add Zulus. 
the British soldiers found adding dirt to camouflage their helmets significantly reduced the chances of getting knifed by an impi. It turns out removing the bright white signposts attached to their heads that declared, Oi, the Brits are over here, was an effective survival tactic. This sensible fashion statement inspired other European powers, and this archetype became widely used in Africa by the 1880s. Another example is cocoa beans were introduced in modern-day Ghana in 1879, as referenced by the Akan Cocoa Beans Tech. They were first brought to Ghana in 1876, but were not planted until 1879. With all of this activity going on, to prevent a widespread war between colonial powers, not like that would ever happen, the Berlin Conference was held, and for the most part was pretty straightforward, where the colonial powers took what they wanted after vigorous but peaceful debate, set rules for taking more of Africa, and then for some reason gave a large chunk of land to the king of Germany's speed bump and a professional sadist, Leopold II, as a personal holding. That's right. It was Leopold's, not Belgium's. Just an aside here. Even other Europeans at the time thought that what this guy was doing was seriously messed up. And that's saying something given how the European powers often treated their colonial subjects. His own countrymen booed at his funeral to voice how horrified they were at his rule over the Congo. Uh, this is just a partial list of the horrific things done on his orders. But let's put these horrid events aside and return to our analysis. As a result of the Berlin Conference, Europe rapidly swallowed the continent, with only Morocco, Liberia, Ethiopia, and a small sultanate in Somalia independent by 1895, largely sticking to the lines drawn in 1884. By 1914, European control was completely asserted over the entire continent, with the two notable exceptions of Liberia and Ethiopia. Speaking of the Ethiopians, let's move on to the next reference to the scramble for Africa, the First Italian-Ethiopian War, which started in 1895 and concluded in 1896. This was the war where Ethiopia established itself as an independent power in Africa, handing European colonial powers one of their few true defeats. The story goes that a treaty was signed by Ethiopia, where the treaty in Amharic, the Ethiopian language, recognized Ethiopia's independence, where the treaty in Italian stated Ethiopia was now a colony of Italy. Technically a protectorate, but you know, they were the same thing. Once the Ethiopian emperor, Menelik II, learned of the deception, he repudiated the treaty, and Italy declared war. It did not go well for Italy. As it turns out, Ethiopia had been procuring modern arms from Britain. So when Italy arrived, they were not fighting the waves of unarmed peasants they were expecting, but a modern army. Italy's army was destroyed and set a precedent for poor military performance that lasted through World War II. What does this have to do with Age of Empires III? Ethiopia is a playable sieve in-game. While there are no references to this war in-game, this event established Ethiopia as an independent, uncontested empire. It is potential evidence towards an end date, since Ethiopia is treated as a civilization capable of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a European colonial power. But that's a subjective point of evidence. After all, Ethiopia was briefly in violent conflict with Britain in 1868, which saw the death of Tewodros II, protagonist of the Era of Princes historical battle and Ethiopian AI personality. This brief conflict also featured the failed attempt at using the Sebastopol mortar. That's right, that big giant cannon that the Ethiopians have access to. Yeah, it never fired successfully and actually just tipped over and just was abandoned. 
kind of anticlimactic. So let's move on to an objective point of evidence, one that's outside of Africa. Beiyang Army is available in-game as an Age 3 home city shipment available to the Chinese. The real Beiyang Army was developed in 1895 in Qing, China, formed as a large Western-inspired imperial army, and lasted in some forms up until the end of World War II in 1945. Those are all of the concrete references that are between 1876 and 1901 in the game. Lastly, let's address some questionable points. These are events where the point in time they represent can be disputed, or the community has indicated they represent certain points in time, but I cannot find any evidence to reinforce that. The first is the tech Smokeless Powder. It is available at Jesuit native sites in-game. In real life, Smokeless Powder experienced a fairly long development process, with the first development being the discovery of nitroglycerin in 1847. The first extensive use of gun cotton in explosives in 1871, and it was first adapted for small arms in 1884. Given the wide range, I cannot place this technology. The second is the Wounded Knee Massacre, which occurred in 1890, and is referenced in the original closing video of the War Chief's campaign. Some say he died at Wounded Knee, where it took a dozen cavalrymen to bring him down. However, this can be construed as an epilogue to a story told after the time period of the game, so it is not substantive. And even more, it is no longer in Age of Empires 3, following the release of the Definitive Edition. The third is the Maya Revolution, available to Mexico. This is known as the Cast War of Yucatan in reality, and lasted from 1847 to 1913, with several different periods with a Mayan state known as Chan Santa Cruz functionally independent until 1883. However, as with smokeless powder, there's no discrete point that I can tie this to. There are cards, such as Poot's Plan and Maria Uikab, that have limited English sources and limited guides on how to pronounce it. These sparse sources indicate that these events occurred sometime in the 1860s, so if any Spanish speaker has more information on this one, please leave a comment calling me a gringo and explaining to me what these references are to. The fourth is the Japanese Age 1 card called Kwankoba Bazaar. Per some members of the community, the first Kwankoba was opened in 1878 in Tokyo. But the only reference I have found was the single photograph of a bazaar from 1895, and that's circumstantial evidence at best. As with the Maya, this is likely being exacerbated by me only speaking English. So if any Japanese speakers have more information, please leave a comment calling me a gaijin and explaining the history of Kwankobas in Japan. The fifth and last questionable piece of evidence is the Industrial Age Mediterranean Church Architecture which features an architectural style similar to Spanish cathedral designs drawn up in the 1880s. However, this church is in the Neo-Gothic style, which first saw churches built like this as early as 1857. Art and architecture are finicky subjects, and given their subjective nature, I do not consider this suitable as evidence for the date range, as ideas or sketches existed previous to the 1880s and as an engineer by trade, I view all art and architecture as worthless drivel. With all of the evidence now present, we can establish three proposed end dates to the Age of Empires III time frame. The most conservative end date is 1876, which is constrained by the campaign's end date with the Battle of the Little Bighorn, but excludes many references to the late 1870s and 1880s. A moderate date would be 1884 with the Berlin Conference, containing all clear references to Africa and all but two later Chinese cards. Finally, the most liberal date would be 1901 with the end of the Victorian era, including all references in-game, notably the Beiyang Army and Boxer Rebellion, 
but would result in the in-game omission of some rather important technologies developed around the turn of the century. Woo! That's a lot of stuff. Hopefully you can all keep that in mind, because I will not be providing notes, and there will be a quiz in the conclusion video. Just kidding. I'll be summarizing things regarding the date ranges we have established. I'm not kidding about the quiz, though. But in the meantime, tell me, what do you think? Are there references to the period between 1876 and 1901 that I missed? Do you have any evidence to dispute these dates that I've provided with either references or missed events that might push that date further out from 1901? If so, please let me know in the comments. If you want to see more of this content as I develop it, Julie, do the, uh, the thing. Thanks for listening. Now go and play some Age of Empires.